Hello, welcome to my video today where we're going to be discussing the Celestron Power Seeker 70AZ Refractor Telescope. Now, this is, as the name would imply, a 70 millimeter objective telescope, which means the objective glass inside here is 70 millimeters across. Now that's not this outside piece, which is the dew shield, but the objective is actually back in here and it's across 70 millimeters. It is an F10 telescope, which means it has a focal length of 700 millimeters. That's much like uh, in a camera with a 700 millimeter lens. That gives you your magnification, so to speak, which really is not as important as, as you may think um, when it comes to astronomy. The main thing is how big the objective is, how much light it can collect. Now, the focal length of 700 millimeters does come into play when you're trying to get close-ups of the crater of the moon or uh, to see Saturn or Jupiter better. But what it does, does not help with is uh, trying to view um, galaxies and nebulas and stuff like that because although you can see some um, under high magnification, you need a lot of um, objective size to be able to collect enough light uh, to be able to see it. But that's uh, really a subject for a, another video. So this little guy runs about $70 to $80 online, depending on where you get it. I'll put a link below. And it is one of the base models of Celestron. Uh, they do make some cheaper stuff, but I would stay away from that. This would probably be the lowest level I would go if you're looking for a, a Christmas present, birthday present, something like that to give to a uh, budding astronomer. It's actually a, a nice tube. Uh, it, it's structurally fairly sound. Um, I like the, the large dew shield. It's got a nice slip on cap and a restrictor here, which really isn't necessary for, for this small of a telescope, but, but it's there nonetheless. The focuser is, of course, it's, it's all kind of a cheap plastic, but it's remarkably smooth and even uh, for something this, this inexpensive. Um, the diagonal is, is an interesting design. It's kind of a ball shape instead of a, the regular angle of a diagonal. And uh, it, it seems to hold the eyepiece quite securely. The mirror inside here is uh, kind of sealed inside a little enclosure. Um, it's kind of a prism type mirror and uh, does a remarkably good job, once again, for, for this price range. It includes uh, this little finder sight, which is a red dot. Uh, I personally prefer red dots. Uh, a lot of people don't. It's really preference. Either one will work fine, especially in a telescope like this where you're going to be trying to point it at a specific object in the sky. You know, you want it lined up with that. This works better, uh, in my opinion, than a smaller telescope basically bolted to the side. It secures with two little screws here. Uh, you just twist this, it comes off. No big deal. Um, the objective in this uh, is once again, remarkably good for the price you're paying. Um, so the objects are, are reasonably clear and, and sharp. The tripod for this is also remarkably good for its size. Most of the inexpensive ones are plastic or have uh, a whole lot of plastic. This has a lot more metal on it than I would expect. It does have plastic on it, definitely, but the metal is a lot nicer than comparable telescopes uh, in this range. You still need to be careful because when you're tightening it and stuff, you're, you're actually tightening plastic on metal. And when you set it up, it, it feels fairly solid, especially for an under $100 telescope. So as you're moving this around, these little guys, unscrew off the side like such and they slide into the tripod mount like that. Now this little rod right here goes in here and what that does is helps you hold it and adjust the slow motion controls. So you want to 
slide that in first and then slide this down into there and then put your little screws in here. Now once you've done that you can snug these down a little bit if you want to. I'm not really worried about it at this point. And then as you're moving the telescope, you can adjust this to hold it where you want. And it's even got a little screw deal here so that you can move it slowly. Okay. Now, all the good things I've said about this, you know, it's got tensioner here so you can you know, snug that down and it, it's a well thought out telescope for its price range and for its size. Uh, some of the things I really like are it all folds down and comes apart into two pieces that can easily go in a bag and I think some of the versions of this do actually come with a bag and you you can very easily stick it in the back seat of a car uh, you can even shove this in a saddlebag on a motorcycle or in a backpack. Uh, so it's, it's extremely portable. The other thing I like is this version, and you got to watch it because this exact same telescope comes in several different versions. And from what I can tell, those versions change with time. So today, which today I'm shooting this is November 11th, 2018, when I went and looked online for this particular telescope to, to make sure I had the prices right, the one that I saw online came with two eyepieces and a Barlow. This particular one, which I think is about a year or two old, uh, comes with one eyepiece. But the you think, okay, well, the newer one has more stuff that makes it better. I disagree because this comes with one really nice eyepiece. This, this is a, for a 60 to, to $80 telescope, this is a bang up eyepiece. This is nice. Um, the ones I saw online came with much less expensive eyepieces and a very cheap Barlow. So one of the things you may want to do is consider upgrading the, the eyepieces. Now the eyepieces that were with the kit that I saw, the bigger one was okay. The smaller one, which is the higher magnification, was pretty much junk, and the Barlow was pretty much junk. So if you get the telescope, uh, or you give the telescope as a gift, and they say, hey, I can't really see anything with this little eyepiece, and the Barlow doesn't really help me much, it just makes everything blurry, uh, don't freak out, that's okay. The telescope itself is pretty good, and it's worth going out and getting some, some decent eyepieces. You don't need expensive eyepieces. Um, you can get really nice, these are, these are called puzzle eyepieces. They're inch and a quarter puzzles. You can get really nice puzzle eyepieces for less than $50 a piece. Uh, you can get acceptable puzzle eyepieces for $15 to $20 a piece. And if you shop uh, used, you can cut both of those prices pretty much in half. Um, what I would suggest is a like a 25 millimeter eyepiece and a 15 millimeter eyepiece, both puzzles. Um, and I would probably, if it were me, I would probably search on eBay or something looking for um, used Orions or Celestrons, uh, you know, nice name brand puzzle eyepieces. There's uh, some Kellners and some other less expensive ones. I would stay way away from those and go ahead and get nice puzzles. Uh, now you may think, okay, well, you said 25 and 15, but the smaller that number goes, the more magnification I have, so that will make things look better. No, it won't. What will happen is you will get uh, less clarity by a long shot. So will you get close-up views, closer-up views of things like uh, the planets and the moon? Absolutely. And they will be so fuzzy that you will think you need Coke bottle glasses to be able to figure out what the heck is in your eyepiece. And nobody wants that. So less magnification, but more clarity to a point is better. So that being said, um, this is an excellent starter telescope uh, for someone who is brand new to the hobby, who wants to go out and, and look at some stuff. And if you want to buy one that's actually gonna get used and actually last a while, 
this is going to be something you like. And I, I very much like this little power seeker 70AZ. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, when I can find these on sale uh, or find them used, I typically pick one up like I did this one. And then I will uh, give it away to somebody who wants a telescope who can't afford one um, or lost theirs or got it broken or stolen or, or whatever. But mainly I try and find somebody who's interested who... Uh, can't afford one and uh, this makes an excellent Christmas birthday whatever present so I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I hope if you're interested in the Celestron Power Seeker 70 AZ that uh, you give it a shot uh, because it's a very nice little beginner scope and uh, be sure and subscribe below and like the video if you have any questions you can always ask them below as well and uh, clear skies <laughs>